John, thanks for coming to talk to us today. It's a pleasure. Um, now, your travel memoir, Surface Mail, is very informative and entertaining, and you give the impression that you enjoyed writing it as well as doing the travelling. Did you write it with a particular readership in mind? Not, not really. I think m most people would enjoy my ups and downs of the journey and visits to new parts of the world. Um, yes, yeah, so I didn't have anybody in mind. And you went right round the globe? Yes, yes I did. I decided from the beginning that I would go to Australia and New Zealand so that I did a full circle of the world. Right. And you were adamant, weren't you, that you weren't going to resort to air transport. Um, after all your travelling, do you recommend a particular mode of surface transport? It depends where you are. In Central America, there are no trains, but the bus service is excellent. Um, and the buses carry freight, and they're a lot of fun as they rattle along. Um, in Asia, for the long distances, train is best. But I had to take four sea crossings, the Pacific, the Atlantic, the Tasman Sea, and the Indian Ocean. So I had a, a wonderful mix of travel. And you had a lot of ups and downs going on this very, very long journey around the world. Can you tell us about any sticky moments you had? Yes. In Panama, I was in the port of Cologne, which is the Atlantic end of the Panama Canal, waiting for my ship to go across the Pacific. And I wandered into, blundered into a no-go area. I didn't know it was a no-go area, but even the police didn't go in there. And I was going down this dark street with no lights, and there were men standing in the shadows watching me, and I grew more and more terrified. I walked as quickly as I could, I didn't run in case I fell over the potholes, and I was just getting back to the part of the town where I would feel safe again, and I felt somebody grab my drawstring bag. Foolishly, I was still holding on to the strings, so the next thing I knew, I was hit across the side of my head. I let go of the bag, and my glasses went flying. I couldn't see anything in the dark. And, yes, that was, the, that was the scariest moment. Right. Um, did, did you ever feel like giving up this long, challenging... Well, there were, there, were, there were times in China and Kazakhstan when I ran out of money because I was drawing money from ATMs, the hole in the wall, mm. which worked very well, but in China they very often refused my card. So I went about 2,000 miles out of my way to find a bank that <laughs> would accept my card. So a few I also, details. Yes, I also rang my son and asked him to send some money. Um, but when I got to the, the office of the place to send it, it was closed. So I managed another way. But at those times, I worked out what was the smallest amount of cash I could live on, <laughs> and if I got below that, I would come home. But I kept going somehow. Um, from your experiences, uh, close to the ordinary people in all these countries, what cultural differences did you notice the most? Oh, that's, uh, that's difficult, but you, you, you're right. I was often the only European on the bus or on the train, sometimes in the whole whole town. Um, yes, oh, there are lots of cultural differences, but what I will say is that everybody was, well, nearly everybody was very friendly and kind. Um, I can talk about individual countries. In Mexico, they're very affectionate people, very affectionate with each other and very sweet and tolerant me, my lack of Spanish. <laughs> um, in Thailand, they're very gracious. Um, China, China is more challenging. 
because I think they approach a lot of things in a very different way from Europeans, and you need to, to get used to that. And the language is, is impenetrable. <laughs> finally, finally I'll just say that in Australia, I felt totally at home right. because of the laid back and jokey manner of the Australians, just the same as those I'd met in this country. Right. And did you make any friendships which have lasted? Yes. Yes. When I was in Australia, I had a wonderful train journey um, across the Nullarbor Plain, the desert. Uh, lots of time to talk to the other passengers. And one of them I've kept up with, and we still email each other. Oh, that's nice. Um, you took a lot of photos along the way, and the photos in the book, I have to say, have really funny captions. But you also described the beauty of many of the places that you visited. Can you tell us about any lasting visual impressions from your trip around the world? Well, the Coromandel Peninsula in North Island of New Zealand was beautiful, but in a rather magical, mysterious kind of way, like as if somebody had designed an ideal landscape. Um, so that, that, was, that was lovely. And then the, the desert in the west, northwest of China was far more barren than the, the Nullarbor Plain. So that, that made a, it was like crossing the moon, or I should, perhaps I should say Mars these days. Um, which country surprised you the most? Well, I didn't have too many preconceptions. I'd been to the United States and Germany before. The other 20 countries were new to me, um, and I had an open mind. But there were individual surprises. For instance, I knew that there were street children in Central America, but when I actually came upon them in San Salvador, the capital of El Salvador, sleeping in broad daylight on the pavement. I, I almost trod on one. Mm. Um, I was very shocked mm, mm. by that. I mean, you're probably unique, aren't you, in visiting these particular countries? I mean, a huge number of countries, all within seven months, was it? Six, six yes, six months. And being able to compare so many in the same time frame. Did you have a favourite country in the end? Well, I think Australia would be the place I would like to go back to. Uh, if it were nearer, it would be a, a wonderful holiday uh, destination. Also, I was only one night in Laos, which everybody says is beautiful, and I can't deny that because I saw, I saw so little. But that time I was running behind time. I had to uh, hurry on to the next country, which was Vietnam. Right. Um, is there anything you would have done differently about the trip as a whole? Yes, I would have organised my money better. <laughs> I had ordered a, a spare bank card, but it didn't arrive in time. I also had uh, traveller's checks, a traveller's check card. Mm -hmm. But that seemed to fizzle out when I left America. So I went around the whole world on one card. If that card had been lost, then uh, I, would have been, I would have been sunk. And it would have been a different book. It would, it, it would have been a much shorter book, probably. <laughs>